In this video, I'm going to be talking about A Farewell to Kings by Rush. The album is celebrating its 45th anniversary. The album uh, was a follow-up to their successful 2112. Um, I could not find an exact uh, release date, but some sources were saying uh, September 1st, so I'm going with that. The idea for this album came out when they ended their tour supporting the album 2112. Rush have always uh, known to be a hard-working band, so they didn't take a break from touring, and they jumped right back into uh, making this next album. So, back in June 1977, they decided to go to a studio in Rockfield, Wales. This was called uh, the Rockfield Studio. What's interesting is that this was the band's first time recording outside of Toronto. Uh, this was also a studio that was chosen uh, by their producer, uh, Terry Brown. The recording process lasted about three weeks, and when they finished the recording process, the album was mixed and mastered in a studio in London called AdVision Studios. So on this album, you may notice they incorporated uh, different instruments. The band wanted to make this uh, one more interesting, so they decided to do something different. So you may notice in the song, Close to the Heart, there's one part where you hear some bells. Uh, that was an idea that Neil Peart had. Geddy Lee and Alex Lapson also tried out a few different like bass and guitars, respectively. The album cover is very interesting. It was designed by Hugh Syme. Um, this is a photograph of a demolition site in Buffalo, New York. And in the background, you can see the Harbor Castle Hotel in Toronto. On the lower right-hand side of the picture, there is this like, distorted puppet thing. It looks like something you would see in a horror movie. And I found it interesting that these are things you might not notice at first glance you know, when looking at this album cover. This album has been reissued a few times over the years. It was released on CD and cassette for the first time in 1986. There was a remaster uh, released in 1997. In 2015, there was a vinyl reissue that was digitally remastered, which is 200 gram uh, audiophile vinyl. They also released it in the form of digital downloads. Lastly, in 2017, they released a 40th anniversary edition and this edition featured two bonus discs. The first disc uh, featured songs taken from a live show recorded in 1978. The second disc featured more live tracks and some songs uh, performed by other bands. So, the one that stood out for me was the cover of Xanadu uh, performed by Dream Theater. The album has only six songs. Side one has two songs, Farewell to Kings and Xanadu. Side two has four songs, Close to the Heart, Cinderella Man, Madrigal and the epic uh, four-part song called Cygnus X1 Book 1 The Voyage. First song, Farewell to Kings, was about six minutes long. Songs about dealing with hypocrisy and finding your own way uh, by looking within yourself. There are a few interesting facts about the song. You can hear some birds chirping that were recorded outside the studio. They also recorded the first guitar part outside with the intention of getting this natural sound. Xanadu also features some birds that were recorded outside of the studio. The song is a little over 11 minutes. The first five minutes of the song is all instrumental. The second part has songs uh, with, or with lyrics written by Neil Peart. And these lyrics were inspired by a poem called uh, Kubla Khan, written by Samuel Taylor Coolidge. According to Neil Peart, the song is about searching for a place called Xanadu that will make you immortal. It's also the first song where synthesizers are used more in the forefront. The song is very complex and uh, the band had to use multiple instruments whenever they played it live. It was a song that uh, they recorded in one take considering that the band had to practice it a few times just to get it down perfectly. On side two is Closer to the Heart. It was the first song that the band recorded and it was almost the album title. It's a short song, under three minutes, as opposed to the longer songs on the album. This is probably the most well-known song in the album. Back when I was younger, the only uh, Rush album I knew was uh, Moving Pictures, but I started to listen to more of their other stuff. And this was uh, one of my favorite songs. I think I heard the live version first from Exit Stage Left. That was their uh, live album released after Moving Pictures. This is uh, one of the songs they played live on many of their tours over the years. So Cinderella Man is a good song. Lyrics written by both Geddy Lee and Alex Lifeson. Uh, lyrics were inspired by an old film called Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. This was released in 1936. This one has more of the rock sound reminiscent of their like, Fly By Night album. I like how they mix in some harder rock riffs and some softer, uh, more melodic sections. 
There are parts of the songs where the acoustic strumming, the guitar solo stands out in the song. Alex Lifeson uses like the wah wah effects on the guitar and something you don't hear often on their albums. Madrigal is a good song, it's a love ballad. It's the shortest song on the album, two and a half minutes. It's just a simple song with uh, acoustic guitars. You hear Getty Lee's bass guitar very well in the song. The album ends with Cygnus X1 Book 1, The Voyage. A 10 minute song had four parts. The main theme was about black holes, uh, something that fascinated Neil Peart after he read about them in a science magazine. What's interesting about this song is that song is considered, uh, it's book one, and then on the next album, they would uh, come out a year later called Hemispheres. The first song is Cygnus X1 book two. So the song is actually divided into into like two parts uh, spread over two albums. I don't know any other bands who actually have done that, but that's pretty cool. This um, song has four sections. So the first one is prologue, just mostly atmospheric noise. Um, the thing you would expect from like a sci-fi story. You hear a distorted voice and some explosions. The band comes in at this point, Getty Lee plays some staccato bass notes in. The band continues with like a stop-start melody. Then they play guitar riffs and then they change tempo and some keyboards and then transitions to what we call, I'll call it just chapter one, even though the next ones are one, two, and three. So chapter one, only 44 seconds long, just Getty Lee singing the first verse and the other members playing the background. Chapter two, the song starts, it picks up this point. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, that classic 70s style, you know, Getty Lee sings in his upper vocal range and this uh, chapter ends with a guitar solo and chapter three is the last three minutes of the song. This is where uh, you feel that kind of you're on like a space trip. It gets very quiet and atmospheric. Gets a little heavier. At this point in the song, they're playing like some of their heaviest stuff they actually played at that time. Getty Lee uh, lets out some screams uh, right at the end of the song and that's where it ends. But the last minute of the song is kind of quiet and somber, kind of slowly fades as the album comes to a close. So that's all for this video. Let me know what you think about Farewell to Kings. Is it one of their best albums? Is it underrated? Let me know in the comments. So the weekend's here. I will be doing um, about like four or five new releases. I think it will be Megadeth, King's X, Blind Guardian, The Hue, and I think Miss May I. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.